G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. DeFi, wow, 6.34 billion. This was at 2 billion not that long ago and then it got to 3 billion and everyone was freaking out. Then it got to 4 billion and everyone was freaking out and 5 billion people are freaking out and now it's 6.34 billion and people are still freaking out. This just continues to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and at unbelievable rates. Now, people talk about DeFi and saying, is it in a bubble? I believe if we are in a bubble, it's still just the very start of the bubble. I don't think we're anywhere near seeing it ready to pop. And there's some reasons that I believe that. And we can go over here and have a look at this. Thailand Central Bank uh, eyes DeFi use cases for its digital BART. Now, it's just eyeing it. It's not saying that it's getting straight into DeFi and all the rest of it, but this is where it starts. There's always going to be an innovator who jumps in first. And I'm not saying it's going to be Thailand's bank, but they are already looking at it. And I can guarantee you, if a bank actually does take the plunge, watch other banks to follow. It's that old saying, no one wants to be the first to do it, in case it all goes wrong and then everyone laughs at you and says, ha ha, I told you it wasn't going to work. But once someone does it, if it starts to work, you watch the next person do it and then the next, 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 and it just escalates. But nobody wants to be the last either. It just takes the first person to do it and for it to work. And then all of a sudden, everyone flows in really, really fast. So Thailand, they're already eyeing it off again. It doesn't say that they've just jumped into DeFi, but they're looking at it. And then we can go across here. Four of South Korea's biggest uh, banks to provide data for DeFi, DeFi platform. So again, they're not diving into DeFi, they're just providing data. But again, this is where it all starts. Th you know, these are banks that are in kind of emerging countries and markets and things like that. And they're going to probably be the first ones that are going to dip their toes into it. The bigger, more mature banks that have been around for a long time and that have, you know, hammered cryptocurrencies and, you know, told you that they're, you know, no good and it's fake and all the rest of it. They are all starting to now uh, be able to take custody of cryptocurrencies for people. That's the start of it. Now they're providing data for DeFi and then all of a sudden they're going to get involved in DeFi. And again... This is where we are. We are now up to $6.34 billion. And again, I, I, I do think DeFi will get to a bubble. It absolutely will, uh, and it'll pop, but I don't think it's going to pop and disappear to nothing, which is what a lot of people think happens in a bubble. No, there's been so many bubbles throughout so many markets over time, it's not funny. They just get to boiling point, basically, and yes, then they pop, and then they come back down to their kind of true levels, even lower than their true levels, and then they just repeat the same cycle. Just when it comes to cryptocurrencies, we basically do it every four years. We get into a bubble, pops, uh, falls back down. We get into another bubble, pops and falls back down. So 6.34 billion, like, it's moving fast. It goes up a billion dollars every couple of weeks at the moment. But let's remember that number, 6.34 billion dollars in DeFi at the moment. And we've got banks, real banks, uh, that are looking into this. And now how much money do real banks have? Uh, you know, I don't know, but I know there is trillions of dollars between the banks. How much Thailand's bank, central bank has, how many four of the uh, biggest, you know, South Korean banks have, I don't know. But, you know, worldwide banks have trillions of dollars. So don't worry about this billion stuff and start to think, oh my God, that's a lot of money. It is nothing. It is a drop in the ocean, ladies and gentlemen. An absolute, and so minuscule it's not funny, and I can show you that. So as, I, as we've said, you know, these banks, central banks all around the world, they've got trillions, and we're talking, you know, trillions and trillions of dollars, a lot of money. And we're talking about $6.34 billion in DeFi. Let's go over here. The total market cap for cryptocurrencies is 376 billion dollars 376 billion dollars and there's 6.34 billion dollars are locked up in DeFi. we're not even close to being at the point where the you know the DeFi bubble goes pop there is such a lot of room to move i am super bullish on DeFi. i think it's going to be massive I really do think it's going to be an absolute behemoth and it is going to make the ICO uh, run from 2017-2018 look 
absolutely minuscule and I mean tiny and I'll show you why so we go and have a look at the DeFi movers just the DeFi movers chain link not moving too much at the moment but it's still moved that in 24 hours maker three percent Aave, 14 percent synthetics three percent uh, OKX, uh, 0X, 17%. Uh, REN, 22%. Numeraire, 40%. Yearn Finance, 17%. Like even 6.5% from Carver is still bloody good in 24 hours. 7.3% in Balancer. 22% in Switchio. 10% in whatever that DMM governance is. AirSwap. 50%. Request Network, 8%. DeFi is growing. And you can just look at how many coins are on in now. I remember when uh, these coins in the DeFi space, there was about 30 of them in total. Then it got up to 50. Now it's got up to 60. Now it's got up to 70. There's now 70 coins on DeFi. And look at some of these moves, 20%. DeFi is just growing and growing and growing and growing. And it's going to continue to grow. We are just in the early stages of the next bull run. When this really starts to pick up next year, I can't even imagine what the prices of some of these coins are going to be. They are going to be ridiculous, particularly when big institutional money gets in. The thing is, we've definitely got institutional money involved uh, inside of cryptocurrencies at the moment, but not the real big players. Not yet. We've had a couple of, you know, uh, what the institution institutional buyers will call early adopters grayscale uh, micro strategy and things like that they are going to be the early adopters the big money like the real big central banks and things like that and jp morgan and you know all, all that kind of stuff they haven't even properly got in yet and when they do and they start to pump their money and this is where they'll go DeFi, the big movers and altcoins because they're not silly they'll have they'll have been doing their research and they'll you know learn how the cycles work these are going to be astronomical i think and they will pop at some stage they absolutely will that's just the way these cycles work in cryptocurrencies they get really really big and overinflated, pop and then it deflates and then we go through a bear market for a little while and then it all just starts over again it's repeated itself time and time and time again but now we have institutional money, big money. You know, people putting in $250 million to buy up Bitcoin. One place, MicroStrategy, bought 21,000 Bitcoin, and I think that cost them $250 million. Grayscale are continuing to buy more uh, cryptocurrencies. And we can go over here. $217 million pours into Grayscale's crypto funds following their uh, ad campaign that they put out the other day. So $217 million in a couple of days. In a couple of days. Now they have been buying obscene amounts of Bitcoin and Ethereum and XRP and Litecoin and probably other coins that we don't even know about. But particularly Bitcoin is where they've focused a lot of it. But then Ethereum, uh, XRP and Litecoin. $217 million in a couple of days. They bought up 150% of all Bitcoin mined in, I think it was the first half of this year. So that was all the Bitcoin that had been mined for the first half of this year they bought, plus 50% more. So they were buying, uh, you know, f from uh, stashes that had been, you know, held for, you know, not rainy days, but, you know, price appreciation days. And they've bought all of that as well. At some stage, the market is absolutely going to move and it's going to move in big ways and particularly into DeFi. Like you go over here, it's going to, it's, going to move into things like Aave. They're talking about bringing real estate onto the blockchain. If they do that, and it's more so when than if, it might, might not be them first, that's all. Someone might get in before them. But when real estate, property, mortgages and things like that end up on the blockchain, 
it's going to be massive again the whole synthetics network i'm you know i'm spewing i can't do anything with synthetics at the moment due to gas uh prices they're just way too high but again from what i've read synthetics are onto that and hopefully in the next few months they'll have a solution that they can do i think they said 2500 transactions per second so that'll really bring it down and i can't remember which solution that they were going for uh, i will have a look at that and i'll try and get back to you on that one i saw it on one of their tweets so you know synthetics network it just it continually uh, grows it's just a behemoth we go over here there it is 842 million uh is what it's doing i remember when it was down at like just a couple sort of hundred million like 150 million 200 million and now it's up here and curve finance you know one billion maker now jumps up to 1.4 billion Aave jumps up to 1.1 sorry 1.46 and 1.13 billion you know all of these ones they're just starting to absolutely pump they are just going through the roof now let's go have a look at the bitcoin uh chart as i said i think in the next few days we're going to see it i mean obviously it's going to it doesn't have a choice but it's going to break out of this ascending sort of wedge this ascending triangle now my gut feeling is i think we're going to come down and retest the kind of eleven thousand three hundred dollar mark uh thereabouts maybe even sort of right down here around the eleven thousand dollar mark and then we're going to bounce back up but you know the, the pressure's building here and it's like a kettle that's about to boil and it's going to steam well if it does then we're going to quickly come up and get up to this twelve and a half thousand dollar mark but again my gut feeling is we've just had some big moves up you know we've only had one reasonable kind of sort of pullback and even that let's have a look i'm pretty sure it was only around about sort of 11 percent or something like that so what do we have there we go it was only a 12 percent uh retracement that's really not that much uh in the grand scheme of things for bitcoin so a 12 percent retracement and then we've really just started to move our way back up again so there's definitely every chance that it's going to break out to the top and we're going to hit that twelve and a half thousand dollar mark but just my gut feeling says i think we're going to have a retracement and we're going to come back down and sort of test this eleven thousand three hundred eleven thousand two hundred dollar range but we could even come back down to about that eleven thousand dollar range, maybe even ten and a half thousand. There's a few people that are saying they suspect we're going to come back uh, and retest this. Uh, I personally don't think we are, and again, none of what I offer is financial advice. It's just my personal advice. But I definitely see us probably coming down somewhere around about here between the eleven thousand sort of three hundred and the eleven thousand two hundred dollar range. I think we come back down, uh, retest this before we finally uh, move back up. And again, as we kind of zoom out, there's only a couple of places that we really uh, are going to find some, you know, old resistance and old support. So it's twelve and a half thousand around that thirteen and a half to four thirteen thousand eight hundred, sorry, to fourteen thousand dollar mark, thereabouts. And then after that, really, there's the seventeen thousand dollar mark, and then we pretty much just jump straight up to the nineteen thousand dollar mark where we were, and then it's just all price discovery after that. I don't think it's going to happen overnight it's definitely going to take sort of a couple of weeks couple of months for all of this to happen but once it does you know watch it go parabolic as long as we get bitcoin trading sideways sorry we'll just go back to the the normal market while bitcoin trades sideways which it has been all these other coins generally they do their best work no thanks go away yep they do their best work so bitcoin trades sideways all the altcoins start to really pump then as soon as bitcoin starts to move everyone takes out their profits from the altcoins and tries to catch that bitcoin move and then once bitcoin gets to its next level so we come back over here again so once we pump up to twelve and a half thousand and maybe go slightly above it and then we'll trade sideways for a while everyone takes their profits that they made out of bitcoin and puts it in back into altcoins and it's just a repeating cycle it does it over and over and over again if you're a great trader and you can you know for forecast and see these moves before before they're coming sweet go for it but for me I'm, I'm an investor i don't do a lot of trading i do some swing trade and position trade and things like that but i don't day trade or anything like that and i don't think i can outsmart the market uh, the, the market's way too smart for me so i just basically find points again i, I got back into bitcoin sort of uh 
late last year and started to you know invest a little bit early this year and when i saw the big pandemic thing uh and it really dropped off that's when i knew it was time for me to make a move and put a little bit more money into cryptocurrency so i really got into bitcoin i think the cheapest i bought it was around about five thousand sort of four hundred i bought just a tiny bit down here but i bought most of mine sort of around that kind of six thousand seven thousand dollar mark uh, that's where i you know put my the majority of my money into Bitcoin uh, at that stage. Again, around about sort of 45% of my investment went into Bitcoin and then I mixed it up between Ethereum, uh, XRP, they were my biggest ones, a little bit of Litecoin and then uh, quite a few different altcoins and I've just been riding it ever since. And like I said, you know, it gets up here and then it travels sideways. This is where the big uh, altcoin money is made when Bitcoin's just ranging sideways, which is what it's doing now. And all the altcoins start to pump. But as soon as Bitcoin started to make a move here, this is where all the altcoins started to bleed off. Everyone started to get their profits and they chucked it into Bitcoin. And then it had its big move right there. And it's just a continuing cycle. It's going to do it over and over and over and over again until we get to the peak. And so if we zoom out, we're going to get to a peak like this. It's going to have pumped up and come down and pumped up and come down and pumped up. And then eventually it just goes parabolic until it gets to its boiling point. Pop. We have this big sell off and correction until we find our true bottom. And then the whole process starts again. We move up, comes down a little bit, we move up, we have a big correction, and then we slowly start to break out of that, uh, you know, which was the descending uh, sort of, uh, depending on how you call it, but anyhow, a wedge pattern. And then we've broke out. And now we're most likely going to do something like this again. This is just going to be history repeats itself. Not identical. And I do like that saying that they have out there. Uh, Bitcoin... Uh, doesn't uh, always uh, do the same thing, but it generally rhymes. Something like that. I forget the exact uh, quote now. But Bitcoin's going to do something like this again, and the cryptocurrency market will follow suit. And I think DeFi is where it's at if you want to make really, really big gains. Plenty of other places that can be uh, can, big gains can be made. Bitcoin in particular, I think there's still plenty of room and plenty of money to be made, and that would be the safest bet, followed by Ethereum and, you know, XRP, if you like XRP, if you hate it, you hate it, fair enough. Do your own research, make your own decisions. They would be the safer bets, but then, yeah, you step outside uh, of those kind of big three and start to look at those DeFi projects uh, and the moves that they're making massive money to be made and again I, you know if i had to take a guess and that's all it would be at the absolute peak of uh the next bull run i could see this being over a hundred billion dollars i think there's going to be over a hundred billion dollars in DeFi at the peak and it could be hundreds of billions of dollars it's really really hard to know and again particularly if you know banks start to put a lot of money in and you know the true institutional money if they start to pile into cryptocurrencies they will come looking at DeFi. they absolutely will they're going to have seen the moves that it's made with such a small percentage of the market again only 6.34 billion out of nearly 400 billion dollars is in DeFi, and that's where the big money movers and big money makers are right now institutional money they will come across at some stage and they're going to pour plenty of money into this so i easily see DeFi being at 100 billion at the peak of the next thing it, you know i could be wrong and maybe institutional money don't uh pour into DeFi, but my gut feeling is that they will and i think this will absolutely skyrocket and again all these prices sorry go back to DeFi again all these prices that we see now you know, Chainlink costing $20, uh, Aave being $0.56, cents, Maker $700 and Synthetic $6, they're going to be a lot bigger. It, it's hard to know. I, you know, I'm not good and I don't like to try and predict prices, but it would not surprise me if Synthetic's got up to close to $100. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me. But I easily see this at the peak of the next run being $30, $40, $50 easily quite easily and the only thing that's really going to affect uh, DeFi from you know going true astronomical 
uh, is a major flaw in their systems. And so far, the good quality ones, nothing have come up, you know, yam and things like that. Absolutely, you know, it, it was out there and they said that is nothing but experimental. It's never been audited, yet people wanted to pile into it, all looking for this, you know, really quick money. And, you know, <laughs> if you're looking for really quick money, you can definitely find it in crypto, but you can lose it just as fast. If you don't do your research, make sure you're getting into good projects that have been around, that have been audited, uh, you know, aren't something that's just suddenly, uh, you know, shown up in the last 24 hours. That's where you're going to get burnt. And I am highly skeptical of any new product that comes out in the DeFi space at the moment. I don't want people to get uh, the thought that nothing good is going to come from DeFi anymore. No uh, new projects going to be any good. I'm not saying that. But there's going to be a ton of you know people out there who are going to see, oh, all you have to do is put out something and say it's DeFi and people are going to pour money into it and then you know the people who make those coins and programs whether they work or not will make millions if not maybe even sometimes billions of dollars who know who knows but anyway that's just my thoughts uh, i think defi has such a long way to go i think it's you know it, it, it's a place where if you want to invest some money you can see massive returns but it's you know it's so dangerous as well please do your research don't invest more than you can afford to lose if you can't afford to lose it don't invest it here. If you're going to invest in cryptocurrencies and you know, you've know you done the research and you believe in them, your best bet is Bitcoin. That's really the safest bet. And then the next one would be uh, Ethereum and then the next one would be XRP. But really, Bitcoin. You'll still do well in Bitcoin most likely. Again, not financial advice, just personal opinion. Uh, you get into Bitcoin now, there's every chance you'll 10x your money within the next year. Not guaranteed. Uh, it could do less. You might only 5x your money. You might only double your money but you might also do more than 10 extra money in the next sort of year and a half as well. Anyway, this one's gone for a while. I don't want to ramble on for too long. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the algorithm and for my videos to get seen. I put out daily content most of the time. Every now and then life gets in the way and I might have to do something else. But thanks very much for tuning into my channel. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. I hope you're on that game train still. And I'll see you next time.